talk a little bit about the size of it and, and maybe sort of point it out because it, it is sure. hard to see and how that can sure. the size of the others? <clears throat> so in, in comparison to a Plains teepee ring, which is almost always five meters in diameter, uh, a good 15, 16 feet in diameter. These lodge pads up here, and we have a sample of about 60 of them, are in the range of three and a half to four meters in diameter. They are much, much smaller. They are made by cutting into the slope on the uphill end and depositing that fill on the downhill end, and there are frequently rock retaining walls. This rock retaining wall is one, two, three, four, four courses high. There is a lot of work that went into these things, considering that the people who made them were digging out the fill from the uphill side with perhaps nothing more than an elk scapula, a shovel-shaped bone that you can dig with. They're probably using that in a basket and just pitching it down here and building up rocks on the downhill side. We, th we think that the lodges were then covered with duff, because at the moment no one would ever want to sleep on a, on a surface that's sloping this much. Some of them were sloping, you know, they have, a, they have a, a run of 50 centimeters. They drop 50 centimeters from one end to the other. That's a, no, but no modern camper would sleep on a slope like that. So using experimental archaeology, we've built some of these and it's very simple to collect pine needle duff and put it in there. It makes a heck of a bed and it's also easy to lose artifacts in a pine needle duff bed and we're happy that they did lose artifacts in that duff. So we think that they were leveled out with pine duff and then there was a wooden superstructure that was built on top of that, of which there's still a couple remnants at, at the site. Probably a Lincoln Log style superstructure that's cribbed, kind of looks like a Navajo Hogan, although there is some evidence of uh, uh, conical wooden teepee-like structures at the site. Um, probably both. There, there's a standing wooden wiki up less than a mile from here that is the conical type, or it was the conical type. Then there are also the crib log structures. Tori has found a couple just recently in this area. <clears throat> so there were probably both conical and crib log structures at the site. Uh, the crib log ones probably had walls this high. We don't know what went, went over that, whether they were skin coverings or grass mats or whatever. The wooden, the, uh, the conical ones probably had grass mats or hides covering them uh, to become waterproof. <clears throat> so these are much smaller than planes, teepee rings, and they contain a very different artifact assemblage from a planes teepee ring. You frequently find monos and matates in these, but not in a planes teepee ring. Um, you frequently find lots and lots of artifacts in these structures and not in teepee rings. So they're, they are probably made by different folks uh, practicing a different form of subsistence here. Uh, I suspect that these were family dwellings used by, you know, mom, dad, and the kids. Um, there's definitely evidence that uh, there were women up here, there were men up here. We have circumstantial evidence that there were kids up here in the form of toys. Ritz, can you talk a little bit about how you stumbled across this place <laughs> and when that was and what, what led you to look in an area like this? Okay, it's a, um, we were up here in 2006. With the tailors brought me up here in 2006 to see that wiki up there. At, and I had a really good crew with a very tr well trained eyes. And we decided, we knew in 2006 that burned areas were very good, that there frequently artifacts were exposed on the surface. So down at the southern end of the site, down low, um, we had just stopped for lunch and I'd found a piece of soapstone, just a cobble, and then I found a matate and we started slowing down. And then Joyce Evans found a projectile point and uh, we started looking around and realized that there was a site here, monos, matates, projectile points, bifaces, and soapstone. And then Joyce asked, so Rich, does this look like the Boulder Ridge site? And I, 
and that's a site on the south fork of the Shoshone River, uh, south of Cody, and that's uh, a, lot, a village site associated with uh, a sheep trap there that had burned. And I said, well, yeah, it's in a burn. And she said, no, that circular ring you're standing in, does that remind you of, of <coughs> Boulder Ridge? And I said, oh, yeah, that, yeah, that does. That reminds me a lot. So really, Joyce Evans is the one who discovered the site because she pointed out the obvious that these were stones, these stone rings were lodge pads. And we found one, then we found another, then we found a couple more. By the end of the day, we'd found, um, I think, 18. And by the end of the second day, we'd found 36. And then we found another 30 when we came back the next year. Uh, and it was, it's totally unsuspecting because if you look at this, if you look at this terrain, it's on a 23 degree slope. That's the same slope as an intermediate ski area at a, at a resort. Um, it's rocky. It's just, you wouldn't, no one in their right mind would camp here, right? You know, it's just not conducive to, to the way white people camp now. But in the past, I suspect there was at least 30 centimeters of pine duff covering everything before this burned. And it was a much nicer spot.